What we have to do now is we have to get into the back of the car and we have to start removing the factory subwoofer, the factory amplifier, and all that area back there. That needs to come out because it's not needed anymore. So everything is now out, all the electronics. We just have these power plugs left over. What we're gonna do is we're gonna figure out how we're gonna get all this stuff mounted in this area here. This is all the equipment we have. We have the, the Zen AB, we have the DM608, we have the LC 4.800. And what we have to do is figure out a way to lay these out. And of course we have the two crossovers. This has to go on this side of the car, which is the driver's side. This is where the factory amplifier is. This needs to go in that general area because that's where the wiring is for it. The DSP is going to be close by to that so we can plug it in. And then the RCA is go this way. The power wire is going to go down the passenger side of the car. So this is the layout that we're basically looking at as far as how this stuff should be in the car. And the only only hope is that we can actually lay it out this way to get it into the car. So what we need to do now is go ahead and grab a tape measure, figure out what will fit where, and build us a big amp board to go across the back of the car so that we can attach all this stuff. Now for this, we're gonna have to use some more rigid material because it has to be thin because the seat's gonna close in front of it. So I'm thinking we're gonna do quarter inch ABS. So now let's go ahead and fabricate us an amp board. That's what we've come up with for the amp board. Hopefully that'll give us the length we need over there for the bigger amp. We made it a two piece to accommodate the length. This will screw into the factory here. It's gonna screw in over there at the factory bolt. I'm thinking I'm gonna make some kind of an L here in the middle to hold the middle section once we get everything laid out and figure out what kind of room we have. We've made the holes for the vents. This is important. I see this a lot of the times. These are for the window vent. People cover these things up. I don't. I strongly recommend you leave at least one of them with access to it so that that air can vent out of the car. Take this over to the bench and we'll figure out how these amplifiers and processors are gonna lay out on this. Print the latest installation guide when you get one. It has changed from the one that was in the box that he gave me. This thing's only like a month old, so always check.
this is the layout we're gonna go with. I'm just gonna check in the vehicle one last time to make sure there's nothing down low like where this needs to go and that needs to go. And then we'll start screwing this thing down and wiring it up. So the only place that there is something is there's like a bracket right here. So what I wanna do is I'm going to take this back into the car and see right where this needs to be. This is the mount I was worried about, but we got a good inch and a half and there's plenty of room this way because the wire is gonna wrap around the backside here. We're good, this will all fit. Before we start screwing all this stuff onto this board, let's talk about the DM608 and the Zen AB real quick and how the two communicate with one another. This thing has 12 channels of output. This has six channels of input, which is what we need, front rear sub. It also has a Toshlink adapter located down here, this pink guy. And that's a digital communication bus that allows this to talk with this and not have to use these RCAs. Fortunately, this guy right here has a Toshlink output, which is this black guy right here. So even though right now we have these hooked up over RCA, we can come out of this with the Tosh link and plug directly into that, thus alleviating the need for these RCAs. So right now we've mocked it up with the RCAs. Let's go ahead, get this stuff mounted on here, start running all our wires. I mentioned earlier, once I got it all assembled, I wanted to put a middle brace in it to support the weight so that it didn't want to fall forward. Came up with this shark fin here. There was already a long three inch bolt that sticks up. So this just slides right into it. There's a hole here, it slides right in, holds the whole thing in place. So now we have the bolt here, we have the two screws here and here, and then this metal brace. Amp wiring is done. Hey man, I'm wearing a different shirt. That's right, this is day two of this install. Came in early, got this finished up. Let's take a look at it. It's time to get them into the car and start running some wires through the car and finish this thing up.
what we have are four L7 8 inch subwoofers. Now these are dual two. Each one is going to be wired up 4 ohm, which is going to give us a pair of 2 ohms, which is then going to give us 1 ohm at the amplifier. We also have the grill. Now he went ahead and had this box built and had it shipped to him. I don't know where he got it from, but it fits up underneath the seat with the risers. These metal brackets here, they got metal brackets to lift the seat up. It came with brackets to move the hinges down. On that side, it actually moved the bracket up, and then this lifts the seat up off the ground. These are meant out of metal. This is a really nice riser set. He said he paid 250 bucks for them. Really nicely built set. Let's get these wired up. First thing we want to do is flip all these guys over. If you've never worked with one of these L7s before, you notice they have the leads on all four corners. And what they do is they put a white dot on the pairs. This doesn't have a white dot. This has a white dot. This has a white dot. That way you know which set of voice coils is which. So like this would be one voice coil. This would be the other voice coil. So what we want to do is go ahead and put jumpers from a dot to a non-dot. So we're going to go from the red with the dot to the black without a dot. And we're going to do that on all these woofers. And for that, and use a piece of 10 gauge. What I like to do when I'm wiring up several woofers like this is get one piece first and then I'm going to copy it so that every single woofer has the exact same size wire. And then with these, I also like to make sure that every one is wired up the same. Red with a white dot to black, red with a white dot to black. Make sure they're all identical. Now what we want to do is remove the speaker cups off the box and we will solder in two runs of wire for each woofer. We've gone ahead and cut four equal runs of 12 gauge. And now that we have four equal length wires, we'll go ahead and get our subwoofers screwed in. So believe it or not, we get asked often, like, why would anyone want to replace their stereo, like speakers and stuff like that? You know, it's got a good system in it. In this case, this had a Bang & Olsen, and it's like, okay. So what we decided to do, and we've done it in a couple videos, is show you guys what we're taking out. That way, for one, if you have one of these vehicles and you want to see what the stuff is that's in there, and two, for those of you that are like, why would you change it? You can figure out why. Take a look at what we just took out of this. This is the speaker that comes out of the rear. It's a six and a half. It's got a funky mount. As you can see, there's three holes on it here, here, and here. And it's got a tweeter. This is unique because a lot of these don't have tweeters. Like I very rarely do we take out speakers and it actually be a coaxial like this. Here's your magnet. So you can kind of get an idea of what size that is. This is made out of a plastic. This is what comes in the front door. It's this weird shape. It's kind of like a six by nine in the center, but then as you see, it's got this odd mount to it. Two screws here, two screws here. On the back side though, it's a whole nother story. Tiny magnet. Now this isn't neodymium or anything like that. It's just a standard magnet. So it's just got a tiny magnet going to it. And then of course the tweeter that comes out of the dash, it has a capacitor on it and it's a fairly good size and it's got some kind of a cloth diaphragm. And then there's the amplifier right here. This is the BO amplifier, Bang & Olsen. On the side, it has the new A to B input. It has a funky little USB right here that doesn't plug in anything. The speaker plug, as well as the power plug. Not all the speaker wires are accessible here. This also uses the radio to power some of the speakers as well. So you can't get everything here. Not that it matters for what we're doing because we ran our own front speakers. As you can see, there's no RCAs or anything like that. Then lastly is the subwoofer and the enclosure that it has. You have what looks like about an eight. It's a dual voice coil here. Now, the one thing I will tell you is it uses a 16 to 18 gauge wire. Coming out of the harness, it's really tiny, almost like a 22 gauge for the woofer. Now, for those of you that are thinking, oh, I might want to put a new eight inch in it, that thing is silly skinny. Anytime you do something new like this, the Zen A to B, there's always a little bit of, mm -hmm, okay, let's turn it on and see what happens because you're just not sure what's going to happen. You've read the instruction manual, which I know you have, and you know what to expect, but that doesn't always mean that's what's going to happen. So let's head in and we'll turn it on for the first time. So it works. That's a good thing. 
Yay. We don't want to turn it up or do anything silly like that. All we want to do is make sure it works. We haven't tuned anything. None of the crossovers are set up. None of, nothing's set up through the DSP. Which brings us to the next part of this. We have to do some software updates. The Zen needs an update and I'm sure the audio control also needs an update. So let's do some updates. Sounds like fun, doesn't it, Fernando? No, it does No. Now, when you're doing an update, make sure you read the instructions on the update. If you don't feel comfortable doing them, call the manufacturer. So like in this case, call Nav TV and say, hey, listen, I'm doing this update for the first time. I'm not a big Windows guy, so I'll be the first one to be like, it's Windows, I don't understand it. I'm calling somebody because I'm a Mac guy. As far as the audio control goes, that's straightforward. You plug it in, it reads it, and it says, hey, you need an update. And it does the update for you. You just don't want to shut off power. So make sure you have power when you're doing that. First things first, though, let's do the Zen update and get that out of the way. We ended up calling Nav TV on it, talking to Bob. Bob's the best. If you ever call Nav TV, talk to Bob. But anyways, there were some drivers that needed to be installed. No problem. Installed the drivers, took care of it. It's up to date. Put it back in, turned it on, and it worked. Good thing, right, Fernando? Correct. Makes me very happy. That's step one. Now we have a bunch of other things. What we want to do at this point is plug in the DM608 audio control to its laptop and get that cooking. Then we're going to do a polarity test. Then we're going to do the SMD DD1. Then we're going to do some RTA. Yeah, it's a whole circle of stuff we have to do. It's a checklist, really. And we're going to go through this checklist so that we can finally get to the one thing that we've been waiting to do, which is what? Doing in. Let's get going. The DM608 comes with this pretty blue USB cable. Plug it into your 608 launch the software in this case we're going to be using a Windows machine because he's a Windows user it'll automatically recognize and see that it's not up to date and it'll ask you just click yes and then of course don't accidentally turn off the car now we just sit back and wait device successfully update rebooting now select ok you want to do when you're setting one of these up, click on output channels. And if you right click over them, it'll highlight what you're going to call them. So in this case, one and two is front. We want to label three and four, which is rear. Five and six are going to be subwoofer. And seven and eight are going to be nothing. And then when you go over to dashboard view, I always like to put the first one as the truck. Now what we want to do is go ahead and load in some of the basic parameters that we do on every installation, which is the crossover. We're going to set it to 80 hertz across the board so that each one of them has at least something connected to it. We'll make sure that the channel inputs are correct and that we're not doing any summing. So the first channel we want to look at is output view. We want to go to channel one and two, and we want to go ahead and set that to 80 hertz. And then we'll go to channels three and four. We'll do the same thing, set it to 80 hertz. Then we'll do the same for five and six, so that each one is good. All right, it's polarity test time. Remember, you want them all to be all the same colors. See, they're all reds or all greens, just so they're all doing the same thing. You got reds? I got reds. So all our polarities are good. That means all the speakers are moving in the right directions. Cool. At this point, we have the polarity test done. DM608 set to our basic parameters so that we have an active crossover. We have all the channels playing. What we want to do now is move on to the SMD DD1 and our setting the gains. If you have passive crossovers, like we have these guys right here, make sure these are disconnected when you're running that thousand hertz test tone through the amplifier to test for the, the level output. Don't run that through these things because you'll, you'll burn them up. Let's grab the DD1. We have signal. When it looks like that, that's bad. We're gonna turn it down a hair. All right, there we go, perfect. Let's move on to the subamp. 
definitely have the gain set. One more thing off the list. This is the funny part because just like doing the installation, it's a lot of moving around, it's a lot of putting things in, it's a lot of wiring, and no results yet, meaning you're, you haven't heard a thing. Tuning it, believe it or not, or as I call setting it up, is the same way. It's a lot of moving around, doing things that you actually haven't got to hear a thing yet. But each one of those things leads to the next, which in the end, hopefully is an amazing sounding system. So as long as you do all these steps, that's where you should be. Let's take a minute and talk about some of the tools that we're gonna use today in order to set this up. This is Audio Control's iTest mic. This is designed to plug into an iPad, which we have right here. And this is going to allow us to see the sound as we hear it in our ears. We're gonna use this for setting up the EQ curve from our software, which takes us to our next set of RTAs. So we have a total of three RTAs going on in this. The one that we're looking at right here, this guy that's showing this almost straight line, this is our input RTA, and this is measuring the electrical signals coming into the DM608. We're playing pink noise right now, that's why it's giving us this nice line right here. This is good, this means that we have a very clean signal coming into it. With the software, we can also come over and look at the output view. As you can see, it kind of slopes down here. The reason why it's doing this is because we have the high pass 80 hertz crossover on, it's naturally rolling that sound down out of the equation. One other thing, if we go to dashboard view, we can actually see the signal coming in, we can see the affected signal, and then once we apply our EQ here, this will also change as well. I like to operate in the output view. One thing that the DM software has is the auto button right here. And what the auto button does is if we were doing something like summing or taking a high level signal in, something that didn't allow us to have this nice clean signal coming into it, if we play the pink noise, we can hit auto EQ, and what that'll do is that'll go ahead and try to straighten this thing out and give us a basic EQ curve to make our lives a little easier. We don't need that for this. All we really need is to be able to play this guy and see what it looks like down here and make whatever adjustments we need to right here. When you're looking at this, how this is set up is the controls on the left-hand side here are your subwoofer. The controls on the right-hand side are gonna be treble and everything in the middle will be mid-range. helpful tip when you're setting this thing up, make sure you save. Anytime you do a big adjustment, make sure you save. And if we didn't say it at the beginning, isolate. We're working on the fronts now, we're gonna move to the backs. I can't think of anything else to drag this video out any longer. So, Fernando, if you please. All right, if you like this video, please subscribe, share, like. You know where you find us, Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. And it's just like when we're done with every car. On to the next one. Bingo. See you guys next time. Bye. Bye. Drop the mic. Oh, damn.